ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله واصحابه وازواجه ومن تبعهم باحسان الى يوم الدين وسلم تسليما كثيرا اما بعد او praises due to Allah we praise him we seek Allah's forgiveness and we ask Allah's aid and assistance and we seek refuge with Allah from the evil within our souls and the consequences of our bad deeds verily whosoever Allah guides no one can lead astray and whosoever Allah allows to go astray, then no one can guide. And I bear witness that there is no God worthy of worship but Allah, and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a slave and his messenger. May Allah exalt his mention. May Allah grant him peace, his companions, his wives, and all those who follow them on their righteous path until the day of judgment. While the masses of Muslims today strive in either making a living, defeating poverty, um, improving their lifestyle, acquiring secular knowledge, and achieving their various goals, only a minority of them have taken up the task to exert themselves in attaining the greatest objective of all. Everything I mentioned earlier, is certainly not the greatest objective at, of all. Only a minority have taken it upon themselves to strive and exert all the efforts which Allah gave them to accomplish and attain this objective. Due to the lack of reflection, due to lack of reflection on the prophetic traditions, the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, many have assumed that this is a, a simple task. Attaining this objective is something easy, something that can be done with great ease. And the truth is, this is not the case. It is not easy. Why? And what is that objective? The objective well, is understood from the following narration, so listen attentively. In a hadith which was narrated by an Nasai and Tirmidhi and uh, Ahmed and Ibn Majah and many others, Sahih hadith, different wording of the hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, If taraqatil yahudu ala ihda wa sab'ina firqa, wa if taraqatil nasara ala thnatayni wa sab'ina firqa, وتفترق أمتي على ثلاث وسبعين فرقة كلها في النار إلا واحدة قالوا من هي يا رسول الله قال ما أنا عليه اليوم وأصحابي وفي رواية من كان على مثل ما أنا عليه اليوم وأصحابي وفي رواية الجماعة إلى آخره Listen to this very important narration The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said the Jews divided into 71 sects or denominations. And the Christians divided into 72 sects or denominations. And this Ummah, whose Ummah? Of the Prophet ﷺ, will divide into 73. Pay attention. More than the Jews and more than the Christians. All of which will enter the fire except one. They said, the Sahaba, Man hiya ya Rasulallah? Which is that group that will not enter the fire? He said, wherever I am upon today and my companions. That one group which will not enter the hellfire is the group which will be upon the way of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his companions. Now, if you had multiple choice you had an exam and the exam had four choices for the correct answer you had four choices and let's say 
say you don't know the answer. Guessing, let's say you're gonna guess. With four answers, what is the probability for you to guess the right answer? 25%. 25%. Imagine if you had 73 options, 73 choices. What are the chances of you guessing the right choice? Allah Alam. But it is not very probable. So here we don't have like three, four groups. And you know, you're, you, you, you have 73 of them. Only one is the one that we're supposed to be on. And this is the title of the lecture. Are you one of them? Are we one of them? And are we striving to be of them? Have we really made the necessary investigation? Have we studied the matter extensively so that we are upon certainty that we are among them? Or is it mere assumptions? Is it something that you will find on Facebook? Is it just a video you will run across on YouTube? Just like that and once you hear some speaker and you read some article, khalas, you're on the path? No. As you will see, there's a lot of effort required. It is not just saying, well, I belong, I'm one of them. You have to do it. You have to understand the deen in the same manner and fashion the Prophet sallallahu applied it to the Sahaba. <laughs> the mere claim, everyone claims the same thing. Any Muslim or not, even the Shia, he will tell you the Quran and the Sunnah. And the Sunnah for them is Ahlul Bayt that they supposedly claim to be honoring and venerating, when in fact they disgrace them and they speak ill of them, but that's, that's a special lecture, inshallah. Everyone will tell you Quran and Sunnah. But which one is the Quran <coughs> and the Sunnah? It is the one according to the way of the Prophet Sallallahu and the early generations, and we will explain. So now you realize the danger? Do you realize the sense of danger? You have to choose one out of 73. And according to the ulama, and in these 73, there may be even, even further divisions. And not only that, these are part of the ummah. We're not speaking about groups which are not even labeled as Muslims, like the Ahmadiyya and the Qadianiyya and what have you, the Nation of Islam in the States and other groups which have left Islam altogether. Still they're a fitna. Now this is among the Muslims, those who remain within Islam, you have 73 of them. Only one, 72 misguided ones, one that is on the path. Now this, this one has to be understood in the light of none other but the Fatiha. Surah Al-Fatiha. You say in Surah Al-Fatiha what? Ihdina as-sirat al-mustaqim. Guide us to the straight path. That straight path is that one, the path of that one group. Have you ever wondered why Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala made it obligatory that you ask for this path 17 times a day minimum? And if you don't, according to a good number of scholars and a position which is very favorable, that you're no longer a Muslim, if you don't pray, you've left Islam. So look at it. If you don't ask for this path because you're not doing salah, you're not a Muslim to begin with. You're something else. If you are Muslim, minimum 17 times a day. The average is 39 to 40. Assuming you pray one rak'ah of witr. One. If you pray 11 rak'ah of witr, that's around 50 times a day. 50 times a day you ask Allah to give you the path of this one group. You see how, Allah, how important it is to Allah that you are upon this path that you don't go left or right? This is in the Fatiha, which we recite every day. The problem with us is, when was the last time we stood in Salah, and really, when we said, إِهْدِنَا الصِّرَاطَ mustaqim, We felt, and we meant, in the depth of our heart, Oh Allah, give me that path of the Prophet ﷺ and the Sahaba. When was the last time we did that? You don't need to answer me. Probably, Fatiha has become a ritual a condition for the validity of the Salah. As for the understanding, the reaction to the ayat, the application in our lives, this may be absent among 
a group, a good number of Muslims. We ask Allah to change our affair and our conditions. And our condition. But the truth is, we're supposed to feel it. We should really ask Allah to give us that path because it's not cheap. And most people are not upon it. Most Muslims today are not upon this path. The majority are among the 72 groups. The minority are upon this path which we have been striving to call to and to live up to ourselves. And we're falling short. We need Allah's aid and assistance to fulfill the requirements of this particular, to fulfill the requirements of this particular path. And we will see inshallah ta'ala what it requires of us. طيب. Now this has to be further understood. Now look, it's like a chain reaction. You understand the hadith of the 73 sects and the light of the path, one path. That is the one you asked for in the Surah Al-Fatiha. For further clarification and reinforcement, listen to this hadith of Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu ardar, and the hadith of Sahih. The Prophet sallallahu he said, Ibn Mas'ud said, خط لنا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم خطا بيده ثم قال هذا سبيل الله مستقيما ثم خط خطوطا عن يمينه وشماله وقال هذه سبل هذه سبل على كل سبيل منها شيطان يدعو إليه ثم قرأ قوله تعالى وأن هذا صراط مستقيما فاتبعوه ولا تتبعوا السبل فتفرق بكم عن سبيله ابن مسعود said the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم drew a line with his hand he drew a line a straight line and he said to the sahaba هذا سبيل الله مستقيما. This is Allah's path straight. This is the path of Allah straight. Then he drew lines on the right of it and on the left. He drew lines on the right and on the left of that straight path. He said هذه سبل. These are other paths. Each one of these paths has a devil calling you to himself or calling you to that path, depending on what the ha, the dhameer, is referring to. يَدْعُوا إِلَيْهِ أَيْ إِلَى السَّبِيلِ أَوْ إِلَى نَفْسِهِ إِلَى الشَّيْطَانِ On each one of these paths, there's a devil who may have a beard, who may wear a turban, who may be wearing a thobe, who may appear to be adhering to the teachings of Islam, who may call himself scholar, Shaykh al-Islam, like Tahir al-Qadri, this newest clown in the Muslim Ummah, this liar, fabricator, may Allah remove him and get rid of him as soon as possible because he comes on YouTube and he says, he brings books, no one knows Arabic. He sees a bunch of people don't know Arabic. Oh, this hadith is that he lies, fabricates against the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Anyone who has 0.05% knowledge, he knows he's a liar. But the, the average people don't know. So he runs his mouth. And he claims that the, the deen is the tasawwuf and that the sahaba did this. All these are lies against the Messenger of Allah. Anyways, a special lecture will be dedicated to his lies, exposing him bi'idhnillah azza wa Now, this is related to what I'm doing right now. Pay attention now. 